I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at the Scarborough Esplanade, a waterfront and cultural tourist centre located along Milford Road. This project began in 2002 and was completed three years later. Today it's a point of interest for tourists and home to 22 booths which offer a variety of services. We'll tell you more as the programme continues. But first, a look at our stories this week. Getting in on the conversation, the youth share their vision for Tobago. Off the Couch, a fight against obesity using dance fitness, and this island's history and culture on canvas. Welcome back. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. We're coming to you from the Scarborough Esplanade, a safe haven for persons to unwind or hold small, quiet meetings. In many ways, this place offers the best of both worlds, a commercial shopping area and a spot where you can simply relax and enjoy the view with no pressure. And for those of us whose idea of fun involves surfing the net and staying in touch, there's free wireless internet access here on the Esplanade. But let's shift the focus away from here to an issue that's gaining prominence worldwide because of escalating youth unemployment levels and demonstrations by young people in many regions of the world. The United Nations says the message is loud and clear. Young people need to be better involved at all levels of decision making and development. Here in Tobago, there's a push to do just that. Let's hear how from Umadara Mills. Youth group representatives sharing their views on the development of Tobago. This crowd represents a wide cross-section of the youth population, ranging from the police youth club to the cadets. Every year we watch that hill, the hills burn, and we have a serious effect on the, the community, like the beaches, the rivers, right, um, the coal olden reef, even the Boko reef is getting a taste of it, the runoff and the, the silt. And we are asking the, the assembly to really take particular interest in what is happening in our communities around the North Coast. But the organization is not waiting on the THA to provide a solution. The group already has a plan. Food is a basic need for any society. And young persons like Lyndon understand the importance of persons working together to improve the island's agricultural sector. Instead of just people waiting Flowers on the roadside, we have to change that sort of mentality. Get the people reorganized, let them form themselves into cooperatives that they could do agriculture. Besides agriculture, the economic growth of the island through private businesses is another topic which is on the minds of young Tobagonians. Entrepreneur Cheslon McConey suggests that in order for young persons to secure their future, they have to become more proactive and determined about their goals. Nobody didn't tell me to get involved in business. A young man aspiring, thank God that he gave me that aspiration. I decided, listen, I'm going to get up and get. I'm not going to wait on anyone to give me something. I'm going to go after. And there is nobody in this room or on earth that could stop me from achieving whatever I want to achieve. Members of the Boys Brigade think that more attention should be given to them outside of national events such as independence. The Boys Brigade is a youth organization which helps young Tobagonians in their academics and a good character development. And as representative of the Tobago Boys Brigade Company, Sheriff Tobias explains, the group is also an asset to the island's tourism industry. We have seen this over the years that we are being able to bring people in to Tobago because of the connections we have. And these are some of the things that organizations like ours do. The meeting with the representatives of various youth organizations is part of the democratization process, which started after the new THE administration took office in January 2013. Other groups, such as the churches and the business sector, will also get a chance to have their say on the affairs of the island. I'm Umidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. 
One wants to promote what he describes as Christian tourism on the island and another is thrilled to bring delegates from around the Caribbean to the capital of paradise. But none of them had all the resources needed. That is until now. Davia Chambers explains. This island will host Rotaract's 27th annual district conference, a departure from what obtained in the past when only one day would be devoted to Tobago. But the THA has stepped in, contributing $50,000, which helped the promoters to change this. We always push that Tobago is the capital of paradise, even when we meet with our friends in Antigua and Grenada and Barbados and they talk about the islands, we always boast that Tobago is the capital of paradise. And we wanted to portray that and let them come here to see what we have been talking about. Rotaract is a community service-oriented organization, so they won't just sit in seminars all day. We will be going to the Jesus Care Home. It's a newly constructed home in Lambo. Um, they recently built it and what we are going to do, we're going to help clean out the construction site and we're also going to plan a kitchen garden on the outside. They have a lot of land. 200 persons will be arriving from around the Caribbean for this year's conference, which will be held over a three-day period from May 17th to 20th. But Rotaract is not alone in its efforts to get more tourists to come to Tobago. There's another attempt, but their target group is different. We want to advertise this thing up the islands, all right, to encourage people. We want to do packages that they will come buy a package, a hotel, a, a tour, tickets for the venue, one event. We want to even make it into a three-day event. I mean, I'll let you know what I'm secret here. You know, we want to make it a three-day event so that, you know, the, the, the Christian community, we want to turn it into a Christian tourism event. And to help them do just that, they got a grant of $20,000. Dominion Promotions puts on the In His Present Praise and Worship concert series here on this island. The last edition was held March 28th. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. For many, it will be their first opportunity to interact with our head of state in such a personal way. But this is exactly what President Anthony Carmona wants, and he's not excluding the children of Tobago. What are we talking about? Umadar Mills has the answers. Eleven sea pupils of Tobago got the privilege of meeting the fifth president of Trinidad and Tobago, Anthony Carmona, during his first official visit to the island since taking office. The students are the first to be a part of the Lunch with the President initiative, an event which allowed them to share their aspirations with the head of state. I was simply blown away by the experience and particularly by the depth of character and sense of vision and ambition displayed by each child. The children shared with me dreams of becoming pediatricians, midwives, computer professionals, one even hope to play for Real Madrid. The initiative, which started in Trinidad, will see the president visiting all schools in the country within one year, where he will impart his knowledge and experiences to the upcoming leaders of the country. It is hoped that this will bring a sense of governance to our young people and encourage them all to engage in the future development and progress of this republic. Kern Grant of Bishop's High School was not able to have such a personal moment as the C students, but he was one of the invited guests when the president visited the Assembly Legislative Chambers for a special sitting of the House. Well, it makes me reassure that the president is going all out just to meet and share his views and ideas with other students other than myself. And President Carmona didn't disappoint assuring to Begonians that during his term of office, he intends to ensure that this island is not just a place of leisure for him. His was an address that touched on issues that mean a lot to Tobagonians. Well, I was honored to be in the presence of the, His Excellency the President, and his speech was one that was inspiring and I was impressed by it, and it helped me to recognize that he has a vision for both Trinidad and Tobago and for the younger generation. Tobago is very familiar to President Carmona. This was his second visit to the island since becoming president. The first was an unofficial visit with his family during the Easter vacation. But he also frequented here during his legal career as a state prosecutor and high court judge 
and with family shortly after leaving law school. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking a break, but coming up, a plan to dance our fat away. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Sit 24-hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Sit Pro, the new face of emergency management. Thanks for staying with us. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. We're on the Scarborough Esplanade, a place that plays host to a variety of events. You name it, it has happened right here. Small business trade shows, fish Fridays, even what's known as the Great Drinks Festival. Actually, this place would be an ideal location for the topic of our next piece. Well, as the story goes, improvisation sparked a trend that's changing the fitness world. So much so, it's estimated that some 14 million people take this Latin-inspired class in over 150 countries every week. And guess what? Tobago is joining that craze. Lisa Marie Bonaparte explains. There are many different kinds of exercises in the world. And then there's this one, Zumba. Zumba is actually a dance fitness craze that has been around from since the 1990s. It, had, it started out in Colombia. And what happened is that the gentleman that had started, I believe they affectionately called him Beto. And uh, what he did, he, had, he, he was accustomed to teaching choreography, dance choreography and fitness. And then one day what happened, he didn't have his music. So he put together a whole different types of genre musics. And he came up with different rules to the music. And that's where Zumba came about. So from Colombia to Tobago, young and old persons alike can learn a fun new type of exercise. Perhaps a good way to get moving that 40% of this country's population who don't get enough exercise according to a 2007 report. In fact, this Zumba initiative is aimed at providing Tobagonians who might not be interested in the traditional form of exercise with another alternative. There's Zumba toning, there's aqua Zumba, there's Zumba Go, there's, there's quite a few, quite a few different types of Zumba. So it depends on what your target is, is um, what you would really choose to kind of, you know, um, tone your body or, you know, whatever, whatever, how high you want your fitness level. Whatever your personal goals, Zumba or any form of exercise is particularly important if Trinidad and Tobago hopes to debunk that Daily Mail ranking which places it as the third fattest country in the world. According to the data, only Kuwait and the United States rank higher in those global estimates. You know, to everyone, you know, please start taking charge of your, your, your lifestyle, you know, start, you know, healthy eating, exercise, you cannot go wrong. The statistics show you cannot go wrong. Uh, we will have less doctor visits, less hospital visits, visits if we you know, take the opportunity to take care of ourselves. We really have to take care of ourselves. And that can begin here at the Speyside Community Center where Zumba classes are held. Persons from other communities are invited to participate as Tobago joins the fight against the alarming increase in obesity in the Caribbean. I am Lisa Marie Bonaparte for Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago is also on board with another issue, the health and safety of its workers. The idea is to ensure employees exist in an environment that's free of work-related illnesses. The safety of workers has always been in focus over the years. But do you know that your health is another part of working in a productive space? Well, the Occupational Health and Safety Authority understands this. And this year, your well-being has been highlighted under the theme, the prevention of occupational diseases. The International Labour Organization states that the inadequate prevention of occupational diseases has profound negative effects, not only on workers and their families, but also on the society at large. Due to the tremendous costs incurred, particularly in terms of loss of productivity 
and burdening of health and social security systems. According to the International Labour Organization, almost 2 million people die from work-related illnesses such as asbestosis, mental and muscle skeletal diseases each year. And although you can receive a correct diagnosis and a compensation for a work-related illness, there is another method which is more effective. Experience showed that prevention works and the prevention is more effective and less costly than treatment and rehabilitation. The safety and welfare of persons working for the THA is top priority for the THA administration, particularly through the establishment of the Occupational Health and Safety Department. The Occupational Safety and Health Department is mandated to ensure that the entire assembly complies with the occupational safety and health standards. During the National Safety Week, the THA worked with the OSHA Authority to ensure that its workers and the public are educated on the importance of sustaining their well-being and the security at their workplace through a symposium, an interdivisional health and safety challenge, and an exhibition. I'm Umidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Staying with the labor a bit longer, let's tell you why some offices around this island took time from their busy schedules to say thank you to a group of employees who are credited with ensuring the smooth administration of our workplaces. They got an opportunity to re-energize before returning to the workplace. These administrative professionals put away all the files for a day and allowed others to celebrate them. We believe that as we are one country, Trinidad and Tobago, whatever we impart to administrative professionals in Trinidad is the same thing that can be applied to administrative professionals in Tobago. They are no different from their counterparts in Trinidad. So this is an opportunity where the Tobago administrative professionals have an opportunity to network with one another, to network with their sister counterparts in Trinidad. Ms. Blackman says for each administrative professionals week, the employees engage in different fun-filled activities. Sharpening the soul, encouraging academic success. And so we looked at that theme and felt the need to sharpen the soul, which we classify the saw here as being administrative professionals. But we decided to do it in a different slant. Rather than sit and have academic type training, we felt that this is a time that the professionals can re-energize themselves. But while the administrative professionals enjoyed being pampered, they were also given some valuable tips for the workplace. The lead goose never flies in front the entire trip. It now would take over a period of time and come to the rear and get the easy flight. A new goose takes the lead, who's fresh and has the strength, the endurance to now continue the flight. Leadership changes every so often. So sometimes, even though somebody is a, a leader or the boss in the office, they don't have the say all the time. Administrative Professionals Week began 30 years ago. This year it started on April 21st and ended on April 26th. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking another break, but do stay with us because when we return, this island's culture in cool watercolors, bold acrylic hues and even copper. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Welcome back and thanks for joining us at the Scarborough Esplanade, a place that's constantly being upgraded for the enjoyment of Tobagonians. The original design for these facilities has since been modified to include a sidewalk, landscaping, benches and lighting. It's one of the few places where you can feel the heartbeat of the city while enjoying the tranquility of the sea. But enough about there for now. Let's talk about why Tobago continues to be a muse for many local, regional and international artists. 
whether it's the friendly people or the beautiful landscape, they all come here to capture the island's culture and history. Omadar Mills tells us about an art exhibition which attracted persons from as far away as Europe. Bright colors of the island's flora and beaches, paintings of the ballet dancers, watercolor portraits and landscapes, and copper works of the island's customs. The art exhibition entitled Tobago Artists 2013 saw over 60 pieces of artworks from 11 Tobago-based artists. With the exhibition attracting students, locals, and visitors from abroad, many persons were delighted by the range and the quality of pieces on display. I like the colors. Uh, they are very uh, fresh and they are very bright and uh, uh, in a good uh, compose. One of the artists and coordinator of the event is Martin Superville. Martin is famous for his portrait paintings and works depicting the traditional art forms of Trinidad and Tobago. He says that art exhibitions are important to any country's development because it allows persons to see their history, culture and future growth in a more meaningful way. If we can get everyone on the island looking at the way they do things as not just uh, uh, a living and that living itself is an art so it means that things that we do whether it may be cooking you turn what you do into an art form. Another patron Joanna Gordon from Austria has been living in Tobago for the past 30 years. She says that although she was fascinated by all the pieces on display, she was especially fond of one medium in particular. The, the copper impressed me of the fine work. It's amazing how he, try, he, he draw out the birds and uh, when, you, when you go on the camera, maybe one of those, it's beautiful. And on the other hand, I love to see the colors, like the impressive. The exhibit, which was set up at the Magdalena Grand Beach Resort, was showcased in Trinidad before coming to Tobago. It is hoped that an exhibition of this nature can run on a continuous basis to provide an avenue for local artists to display and sell their art pieces. I'm Umidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. For close to two weeks, this island was transformed into a musical mecca. All the big names in soca, R&B and jazz came here for a calendar of events ranging from pizzazz to world music night. And though they've all packed up and left, we couldn't just close the curtains without sharing highlights from one of the most anticipated nights. Davia Chambers reports. Beach Jazz Fiesta, the final event on this year's calendar of the Tobago Jazz Experience. Many turned out and good weather prevailed this time. No rain, allowing them to hear what they missed on Friday, UK's sensation, Liani Lahabas. I could go solo, would that be the right thing to do? Local jazz entertainers, Masters Minds, also did not let down their fans. Don't want to waste your time, so don't let me, don't won't let, let you fade tonight. Don't keep me waiting for love. H2O Flow contributed to the evening of music. Baby, 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 baby. And then one of the main artists, Dion Warwick. If you see me walking down the street and I start to cry, each time with me. Then 
the moment many waited for. India Ari. Depend on how the wind blows, I might even paint my toe. It really just depends on whatever feels good to my soul. And that brought the curtains down on Tobago Jazz Experience 2013. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. Now, earlier we told you about a program to get Tobagonians moving, an initiative that's driven in part by a warning from the Caribbean Food and Nutrition Institute. Back in 2007, we were told that obesity is the most important underlying cause of death in the region, and it poses a formidable threat to our development. Fast forward to 2013, Trinidad and Tobago is listed as the third fattest country in the world. In light of all this information, we wanted to know what you think Tobagonians can do to tackle the problem. This is what you said. You need to get back to the old times of eating, where you eat more local foods and try to stay away from all these fast food, and then they had to incorporate that with some exercise. Because right now we don't have a lot of people doing um, gardening and stuff that the way the old time people used to do it so you know they had to get into a lot of exercise and get back to natural foods first of all it's based on the individual themselves you know if they eat less and stuff and be more health conscious then the problem will be solved and they should practice from home first you know teach a trend what to eat and the business place like who's selling food could start doing things to help people with obesity in trip tobago in fact, Trinidad and Tobago for that matter. They had to cut up some of them uh, fried chicken and things where they're eating and do a much more walking instead of driving every minute. Or two. Everybody gets lazy today. They eat anything. It's just like going in the hospital when you are sick and they just give you one thing so you wouldn't live long. Everybody is lazy. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Do remember you can send us your comments to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and add us to your YouTube playlist. I'm Colleen Holden. On behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. And as we go, here's a final look at the performances which brought the curtain down on the 2013 edition of the Tobago Jazz Experience. Baby, baby.